Patrick Murphy with us this morning. His team coming off a big 4-2 to two win last night at Road Stadium of the University of South Alabama. Good morning, Coach. Hey, Gary. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Oh, good to have you. I thought last night um, was one of those games that uh, during the course of a season, you're coming off a, a big road series at A&M. You've got Kentucky coming in here uh, this weekend. You're going to be celebrating 20 years of Alabama softball, the 20th season. And then sandwiched between that, you've got a motivated, really good in-state rival that knows if they can beat Alabama, it's huge for their postseason resume, their RPI. And they came in here ready to play, and you gutted it out. It wasn't your best offense offensive game but they made a mistake you took advantage and you got out of there with a 4-2 win yeah you know um one of the media afterwards asked me uh were you surprised um about them and i said no way way. you know they've they've been a regional i don't know how many years in a row uh should have been in a super regional one year probably was one strike away and um you know their their starting pitcher she she had like a 1-5 era and probably one of the best in their conference for sure. And, you know, Becky's done a great job there. So there's no way that we were surprised um, or, you know, we respect the heck out of them. So it was just a good win, and you you captured it perfectly. You know, they made one big mistake, and that was two runs, and that made the difference. And I thought Sydney and Lexi, though, pitched really well for us. Sydney really only one mistake to the ninth spot for the home run. And then after that, I think she retired eight in a row. And then Lexi came in and struck out seven of the nine. And really, you know, one little ground ball slap base hit that just she, you know, put perfectly on the infield. But other than that, I mean, Leona was great. Uh, Leona's uh, two-run home run, that was probably, I don't know if you remember Jackie Traina's one year against Auburn. She hit it about two miles away from Northport. Yeah, I do. That was Leona's last night. And then um, the double uh, was too bad nobody was on because that would have scored a couple too. But she's been seeing the ball really well, and we need her definitely down the stretch. Yeah, the only question on hers was fair or foul because she hit it it a mile. You're right. I was praying that he was going to call it fair because it was was probably, what, 20 feet higher than the foul pole. Easily, easily, if not more. Yeah, it was a shot. Yeah, going 12-0 and all-time against South Alabama is no small feat. As you mentioned, that's a really good program down there. You talked about the pitching. I guess the thing that jumped out to me was no walks uh, again. I mean, yes. uh, you're making other teams earn everything. You're you're the best in the SEC in giving up walks. Uh, Little John uh, just kind of did what she does, you know, make them put it in play. Uh, probably wasn't her best night last night, but she was solid. And then you mentioned Osorio. I think it was seven of eight. I thought she came in with an out already recorded. I thought she faced eight batters and struck out seven of them. Murph, I might be wrong. It might have been seven of nine, but I was thinking it was seven of eight. But she was just uh, unbelievable last night. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, both of them, well, before we entered the A&M series, when the, the Aggie Network called me for the preview, um, I just – bragged on them about the fewest walks and you know they were really making people put in a play and our defense was helping them out and then just had a bad weekend with some walks and probably some umpires but um <laughs> yeah uh but last night they were back on track and you know 11 k's to no walks and you know a lot of coaches and, and teams talk about that but i i don't think people realize the benefit of not giving up that free base, and it's just huge. And one year we won the SEC, and the only difference between the two teams was our pitchers gave up half the amount of walks, and then on the other side, the offense, our hitters walked twice as much that year that we won it. So we were giving up fewer, but we were getting. It's almost like shooting free throws in basketball. You know, the team that shoots the most free throws usually wins. But um, it's a huge weapon. Uh, if you have pitchers that can control the zone, and uh, then if you have hitters who can take the balls, it's a big deal. Alabama softball coach Patrick Murphy, our leadoff guest this morning on the Gary Harris Show on Tide 99.1, powered by Pepsi. Let's go back to Leona because I one thing I always pick up on with you is is – you have a lot of different motivational tactics, but your biggest one, as you like to say, is is the best motivating aspect that you can do is put somebody over there next to you and let them watch for a while. You did that with her against Southern Mississippi and Hattiesburg last week. You brought her into the seventh inning in a game that was 
already in hand just to get her in that bat. She hits a home run. Then she goes crazy at A&M. Then she comes back last night. And, I, I mean, it's an amazing – not that she hasn't been a good hitter all year, but all of a sudden this streak, do you really think it started with that decision to hold her out against Southern Mississippi? Well, I, I think what happened was when she did come in, she had, you know, she had a couple of days and probably, you know, some time there just to realize that her time is short here. You know, she's a senior. We've got now we've got, what, nine regular season games left. And she wants a clear head. She doesn't want anything in her mind that's going to be negative or to hold her back. And I think that night it was just like when she came in to pinch hit, um, and in the bottom of the seventh, I went over to her and I said, what was different? She said, I just got up there and said, I'm just going to hit the crap out of this ball, <laughs> you know, and not think of anything. It was the first pitch. She clobbered it. And it was almost like um, she knew what was coming. You know, it was an inside whatever, rise ball, fastball. And um, she got every bit of it. And then at A&M, she almost continued the same thing. She hit one to left, she hit one to right, and then she hit a moonshot, kind of the left center, for three home runs. And then obviously last night, uh, you know, both of those shots were right on the nose. So I'm hoping that she can just roll this out and keep keeping uh, her momentum going because it's fun to watch. I mean, she's been doing that for four years in practice. But the toughest part for me and Allie and Adam and, you know, our whole coaching staff is to get somebody to do what she does in practice where there's no pressure, it's just freewheeling and, you know, just having fun, and then transfer that to the game. And that's, it's tough to do. But now I, I can see she's starting to do that. Before we move on to Kentucky, one more thought on last night's game. I was looking at the lineup card, and I know you're playing for this year, and, and you got a chance to do something special, but you're always kind of building your team thinking ahead for the future and last night I look up and, and you've got three true freshmen in the lineup last night when you made out the scorecard did you realize I mean I know you don't necessarily look at what what year they are but did you realize you had started three true freshmen last night well Mary Cranick had actually had the best batting practice of anybody um, Tuesday so it was kind of a reward for her because you know a lot of times when they don't play during the regular season or they don't get a lot of opportunities um we're going to use one of them. Somebody's going to be a pinch hitter in the postseason. And if they're not ready, they're not going to perform. And, you know, I've got a really good story because Jazz Lunsford was one of those kids. You know, she was a Northport County mm-hmm. High product. She had an at-bat like April 6th, her freshman year, and she didn't get another one until May 30th at the World Series with the bases loaded and two outs <laughs> against Arizona State. I'd say she came through on that one. Exactly. So and she hit an opposite field pinch hit grand slam. Well, that kid was ready. Right. She was prepared. Exactly. She didn't She didn't just say, screw this, I'm not playing, I'm not going to work hard. She came every day and worked hard. And Mary was like that. You know, she could pack it in, say, well, I'm not going to play. I've got three seniors in the outfield. But she did the opposite. And she looked really good in practice. And Mary Schroeder definitely earned it, too, because she hit great at A&M. So we're going to need one of those or both of them down the stretch in a game. And I'd rather have them, you know, get some opportunities against a good South Alabama team and, you know, beating somebody 14 to nothing because my mom could get a hit when it was 14 to nothing. But against, you know, a good South Alabama pitching staff, they need to see that. 39 and 8 overall now 10 and 5 in the SEC ranked 4th in the country back into conference play this weekend a, a really talented Kentucky team comes into Tuscaloosa and there's going to be a lot of pomp and circumstance surrounding this series it's the 20th year of of Alabama softball you're going to have the alumni back um so and, and I know you enjoy these type of of things because it's part of the program and it's part of the history and it, it's a celebration at the same time you got to focus on softball what's the balance when you when you have a big series like this but you're also having a, a celebration you've got former players back in uh as a coach how do you handle that yes we want to have fun yes we want to enjoy it but we've got to focus on what our business is about which is winning the series well you try to set the, the tone from the very beginning of the year with that because there's so many things you know softball is becoming so um media friendly and media popular right that 10 years ago i didn't have to do this even this phone call you know right so the girls have kind of learned along the way and we do things throughout the season to kind of set them up for all the media at the world series or super regionals 
And one of the ways, like, for a couple of non-conference games during the season, we would have our pregame batting practice. And a lot of coaches think I'm crazy for doing this, but it's never backfired. So one group hits, one group shags, the other group goes up into the crowd and says thank you to all the people that are at the game. Oh, wow. And they, yeah, they meet and greet people. And so one group is on the field hitting. The other group is shagging the thigh balls and the ground balls. But then the third group has an opportunity to say thanks to all the fans. Well, that's a quick turnaround. And when I yell rotate, those, those kids that are up in the stands now have to sprint down and get their batting practice head on straight. And then we rotate. And, you know, I can see uh, some of the younger kids that maybe it takes them a couple swings or even a round to get back to where they should be. But, you know, and when then we talk about it. And I say, you know, look, did you guys watch Haley? Because Haley can, you know, turn the switch immediately from talking to fans, meet and greet, and then boom, she's down on batting practice and she's locked in. So that helps us. And then like a weekend like this, like we're going to have a, a pregame tailgate with all the alums on Saturday, but I want our team to talk to them and meet them and, you know, meet the kids that played in the very first season in 1997. So, but then an hour and a half later, we're going to go take batting practice. And then an hour later, we're going to play a really good Kentucky team. So there is a balance, but um, this is the 20th anniversary, like you said, and what we tried to do at the beginning. When we went on every road trip, I brought a uh, little speaker, and um, I had former players call in and um, just describe what it was like to play for Alabama through 1997 to 2000. Paula White, who was on the very first four teams, and J.C. Chapman Hammer, they called in. Uh, Ashley Holcomb-Bell, who was one of our best catchers ever, she called when we uh, went on a road trip. Um, Brittany Rogers, um, probably one of our best all-time outfielders. When we went to the Georgia State Tournament in Atlanta, she got the honor of calling in and because um, she's from Atlanta. So it's been kind of a treat all year long, and I wanted to make it special because it is. This is the only, this is the only 20th team in the history. So we're doing all these things uh, during the year, and I think this weekend is going to uh, culminate all those things, and I think they're kind of ready for not only the games but um, the celebration too. Three conference series left, Murph, before the SEC tournament. When you look at the conference, uh, man, as, as Webb Sanders would say, it's a it's a booger. Uh, Florida's number one, Auburn's two, year four in the standings. Gators are twelve and three. Two of their losses, you gave them. You can't do anything about them anymore. You can't play them anymore. Auburn's twelve and three in the league. You don't get to play them. Kentucky's twelve and five. You get them this weekend. Tennessee's twelve and six. You don't get to play them. Georgia's nine and six. You get to play them. Alabama, of course, ten and five. But when you look at this Kentucky team, you know they're kicking themselves over that Auburn series. They got swept and probably could have won two, maybe should have won two in that series. Yet they're still twelve and five. They're they're really good, and I say that because I know softball fans understand what they've done the last couple of years. But probably still, when they think of the SEC, they don't think of Kentucky up there with you guys and Florida and Tennessee and George and LSU, some of the traditional powers. But talk about them. They're they're a really talented team. Yeah, Rachel Lawson does a really good job. Um, I think she's been there maybe nine or ten years, and slowly has built a really good culture and. Uh, the thing that worries me the most is they got kind of like us that got a very good pitching staff, and one is a senior, and she's I, I feel like she's on a mission because last year uh, they finished 12th, and it was just a bad year. I think the, the kid had 13 losses, and she had come off a year where they had gone to the World Series, and it was I don't you know I I don't know what happened, but they went from the World Series to 12th in the SEC, and so they've got a bunch of seniors, and they probably said, you know, this isn't going to happen again. And um, I know Rachel has talked that they spent almost all fall on offensive things because they didn't hit very well last year. And so now they have two pitchers. They have a righty and a lefty. Kelsey Nunley is the senior righty. She's one of the hardest throwers in the conference. She's a kid that um, she is not afraid to go inside, and probably 80% of her pitches will be on the inside half. And she's got kind of a nasty screwball that goes into righties away from lefties. She's got a change-up, rise ball. Um, but she's just a tough kid. She's from a small town in Tennessee that 
she kind of got overlooked recruiting wise, and she went to Kentucky with a big old chip on her shoulder. And their second kid is a kid named Megan Prince, and she's a shorter, probably five five, but a lefty. And she too has taken on some of Nunley's um, qualities. She's kind of like a bulldog. She's got a heavy drop, a uh, good change up, um, and she's been winning a lot of their second games. So a righty and a lefty, and um, kind of a little different look because Prince is more down, and Nunley's uh, screw and a rise. Uh, their shortstop, people need to watch for her because she's got probably one of the best arms in the conference. Um, really, really good defender. Um, fun to watch. Uh, got drafted by the NPF. Um, so did Nunley, the pitcher. So, if you know, it's kind of cool that all these Alabama fans, when they see these kids in the SEC, and last night even the South Alabama third baseman, uh, Messer, who was hitting about 435, mm-hmm. she got drafted by the NPF. And now... These kids um, and their teams make the Pro Championship Series. We can see them again in August. So uh, we kind of get a little preview of all these future pro pro players and then, uh, you know, kind of get to cheer for them in August. So it'll be tough. You know, this um, you ride against Auburn. Uh, they have lots of chances. Um, they went down to LSU, and I don't know if many people know this, but they – they were the first team ever to sweep LSU and not give up a run. So I that shows that. you, yeah. I mean, they're they're very good, uh, and their pitching staff was just terrific down in Baton Rouge. Wrapping up with Patrick Murphy, Alabama head softball coach. As I said, three SEC series left against Kentucky at South Carolina, and then at home against Georgia. It's a uh, dogfight for this regular season conference championship. Is that something, uh, because I know you can only control control what you control, and that's the nine games you have left, is it something that you talk to your team about, or is it just kind of on the periphery out there and that you you don't really talk about the regular season championship at this point uh, because you will have to have some help from somebody else regardless of what you do, or is it something that you, you bring up and say, hey, let's go for this, we can still get this? No, I, you know, we say we control our, you know, we do what we need to do. And it's unfortunate we don't get to play Auburn, you know, because when we, we added Missouri and A&M, we knew this was going to happen right. for years. You only get to play eight opponents, and one year you're going to get kind of the easier schedule, and then the next year you're going to get a harder schedule, and just sometimes, you know, it just stinks. But, you know, we did what we needed to do against Florida, but we don't get shots um, against Auburn. But, um no, I think they realize, and um, you never know. Anything can happen. Um, they all have, you know, pretty good teams left. And um, But one thing I would do on stage, you know, it is the 20th anniversary, and we've got six regular season home games. Um, and that means only six more opportunities to see the senior class, including Haley, Callie, Leona, and Andrea. But um, for an Alabama fan that has not seen Haley McClinney live, they need to get out there this weekend because – you know, she's our version of Derrick Henry. She doesn't come along very often. Um, and this is a big, big weekend for us. And I'd, I'd love to have three crowds of 4,000 because baseball isn't in town. You know, nothing much is going on. So uh, we need some a lot of people out there. 6.30 tomorrow night, 5 o'clock on Saturday, one thirty on Sunday, all games at the Rhodes House. Thanks for your time, Coach. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Gary.